certain place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. Today, Alison McKenzie and Rodney Harrington attended a wedding. The wedding of Rodney's former wife, Betty Anderson, to Stephen Cord. For these people, and others in Peyton Place, spring is indeed a time of promise. And sudden changes of weather. Okay, now duck your head. Get up now. Never. Oh, I can't do that as well with short hair. Well, you can't be a sailor and a caveman both at the same time. Hey, I'm Rodney Harrington, the golden boy who can do everything. The golden boy, that's a laugh. Hey, none of that. Now, we promise. No past, no present, no future. We just sail on to Never Never Man. Okay, move me back four paces. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Penny for your thoughts? All right, two pennies. Uh, and boardwalk and park place. I, I was thinking about the wedding. Oh. Well, I'm taking back boardwalk. <laughs> Sorry, it's hard not to think about anything. Well, what about the wedding? I'm thinking about Betty, how she looks. So sure of herself. And Stephen. He loves her. They know what they want, Alice. They know where they're going. And we just drift along out to sea. Hey, let's get back to Never Never Land, huh? Reality's no fun. Wind's dying. We're in a calm. Like us. No moving backwards. No moving ahead. The calm. That can't be so. Not with us. Allison, we've known each other all our lives. And no matter what happened, we still came back to each other. Get the line. Well, where do we go now? What are we going to do? I can't offer you marriage. I can't promise you marriage. It's going to take me a hundred years to pay off my debts. I'm not asking you to promise me anything. I'm not like Norman. I, I can't think about marriage when I've got nothing but a couple of dreams in the bank. I want to be able to offer my princess everything. and do you realize that I know your mother and your 
your father, your aunts, your cousins. Pretend. Pretend I'm a new girl in town. That we don't know anything about each other, except that we love each other. Don't let the past hurt us. Something is happening now. Thank you for the escort service, Mike. My pleasure, madame. My pleasure. Mike, don't go. Uh, can I fix your drink? No, no. I think I drank enough champagne at the wedding to float a battleship. <laughs> well, how about some coffee? And a tea? Listen, it'll only take a minute. I'll go right to the kitchen. No, nope. but... Talking too much? No. A little too fast? <laughs> Come on in, Mike. Oh, I hate weddings, don't you? Well, I, uh... I guess. <laughs> well, can I fix you in? <sighs> I guess I am nervous, huh? Well, that's natural. I have a feeling if I stop talking that well, something terrible will happen. I don't know. I guess I'm afraid to be alone with my own thoughts. I just... Oh, my God, I just feel so... Depressed? Well, that's natural. You keep a... A smile pasted on your face for so long, and you keep standing so tall and proud so long, and being so cheerful and bright so long, and mouthing all those cliches. How's that for an instant wedding diagnosis? <laughs> you know, if just one more person had said, what a lovely wedding, just, just one time, I... <laughs> I can see the mother of the bride socking one of the guests. <laughs> you know, I couldn't concentrate on the ceremony. My mind kept racing. I just... Oh, I kept thinking about George. How happy he would have been. His little girl. You know, the day Betty was born, George rushed out and he, he bought this. He brought it to the hospital all tied up in little pink ribbons and little pink tea roses. It's a baby. It's got Betty's first tooth. Her first scratched knee and her first report card. George made all the entries. I wish you could have seen George years ago when Betty was a baby. He used to make me put on her frilliest little things and then he'd take her to the park. Oh, he'd beam when people said, Is that you, little girl? I hope she'll be happy. What are you doing? Stalling. Well, uh, shouldn't we unpack? Nope. Unless you have a sudden compulsion for housekeeping. I guess I just want the room to have that um, lived-in look. Come here, you. Come in. Compliments of the management. Well, thank them very much. You're welcome, Mr. Corden. Oh, 
say no. Do you think it's because this is the bridal suite? Or did they see the glow on the bride's face? You know, we might never have met. In a town as small as Peyton Place? Martin Peyton hadn't sent you to work in Mr. Dowd's office. Remember the first time you came to the hospital? You were flirting with the Reverend Jerry Befford? I was not. He asked me for a date. Then I asked you for a date. And I refused. You hated me. Mm -hmm. Even your mother hated mm -hmm. me. Quite a beginning. Quite an ending. Spent my life as a bachelor. Mean, penny pinching, never smiling, kicking old ladies and dogs. We would have run into each other. To us. Our children. Our future. A long life. To happiness. A life without quarrels. To your mother's approval. To your mother's approval. <laughs> Success. To the big house. Whatever you want. Whatever we want. Rodney, Allison. We went sailing. Well, goodbye. Oh. Hmm? Oh. Oh, you check. Where did you sail? Just along the bay. Wasn't the wedding wonderful? I put your uh, wedding bouquet in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm.